Hi guys, it's Heinze here. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're brand new to this channel, smash that subscribe button. It is super, super important to help us grow this awesome channel. Now guys, we need to talk road right ahead. Uh, there's so much to unpack. There was so much going on. I didn't quite know how to approach it the best in bringing it across in a video. So we actually just had the Gridzy session a few hours ago where we get together with my boy Gridden. Uh, we also had some fantastic guests, Fulbright and Tassinix as well. And all of us discussed the road ahead uh, right through with all the different uh, thoughts, opinions, and also, you know, whether we think it's been a good move or not. So guys, I thought I'd make a video and upload it for those that missed it because it was a really, really cool conversation. So guys, I hope you enjoy. Feel free to join us on Twitch, of course, anytime when we're live for the Gridzy session. Uh, this week and next week, it's on Saturday Night US because of the GAC lock. Normally, it's on Friday night US, around 10, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so come and hang out with us, guys. It's a hell of a good time. In the meantime, check out the conversation and let us know in the comments below what you think. I think, I, uh, again, getting getting rid of the, the nitty-gritties, uh, or we'll get into that later. Um, I think they are trying to do something that needs to be done, but they're doing it in the wrong way. Okay. I'll start with that. Okay, fair so, enough. All right. That's, that's kind of where I'm at of I think this should be treated differently, but they're they're doing it anyways. Okay, fair I enough. I think there's a better way of trying to achieve what they are doing. That 100%, 100%. And and I think it's I think the problem is it's just so much all at once. It really is. And I think the best way to go about this is just to have a quick chat about one by one. I think that's going to be an easy way to go about it, right? So I'm not going to talk about positives and negatives. I'm going to st I'm going to start on the point that everyone is certainly, I mean, there's two things that most people are certainly not happy about. So let, let's start with those. I, I see the first mm -hmm. one, of course, is the changes to some of the characters that we know and love. So let, let's start with that one. Um, that one's certainly a polarizing issue. It really, really is. Um, a lot of people have invested a lot of time, energy, resources, and cash into characters that really are not going to be as good as they had been working around and strategizing for for quite some time um it's it's something that really is a problem that as they said has probably been building for a while but just to basically cut it off at the head um all at once with everything else they want to bring in it's a lot to take in it, it really is but uh Tassinix, your, your thoughts overall man Let, let's talk about the changes to the characters because i don't know about you but man i see this as a theory crafting uh up yours <laughs> i really do um but dude I, i'd love your opinion for sure well, I mean, it's it, what everybody's been saying, you know, about how this really neuters your opportunity to use non-GL counters. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. I mean, play testing, um, we'll have to prove that out. You'll, there's probably, I was talking with a, a couple other people today, so it's not my thought, but I agreed with the thought that there's probably still room for the JKR, JKL counter to slacker to still work. Um, you're, you're, you're having more armor penetration on there and you kick the teeth out of tanks with JKL now. So there, there might be some opportunity there, but, um, yeah, it does reduce, it does reduce your options to go after that. Uh, on the other hand, you know, they never intended for characters that came out like 40 years ago to be able to effectively shut down their latest and greatest. Like, all, all spend concern issues aside, like, I agree with the idea that, like, their design intent for Galactic Legends uh, is that they should be raid bosses. And I just don't see how Thrawn figures into a valid, like, counter long term for whatever uh gls that come out not even the existing ones i mean you would expect that if they didn't make this change you could see these older characters just go on indefinitely and still be good swiss army knives and it sucks to lose that utility and everything it does it, it, it's it's painful but um and, and to your to your point that all these changes happening at once like I'd rather them rip off the Band-Aid. I would, I, I would rather just understand it's a different tomorrow and get used to it from there. I would hate for this to be dripped in because, I mean, look, look what we've had over here just over the last few weeks. You had the release of JMK, which was disruptive. And then you had Cat, which was disruptive to JMK. Um, and I, I think that as they release new characters, in order to, to continue to push the envelope, you can't have the threat of this really old stuff uh, that can just shut you down. 
Fair enough. So that's like my five-minute monologue. I no, know. no, absolutely. No, again, that's great. Absolutely. And, and Fulbright, your thoughts as well uh, on, on the character changes because it's a big, big well, deal. This is, this is where, this is where, I, where I'm where i coming from on this. To me, having two GLs was awesome. Having four was p- making the game kind of stale. Having five and then going into the six, it's really making GAC and Territory War kind of boring because it, it's nothing but an efficiency war. Most opponents don't go super heavy on defense. They set a cheese board and they're just using overpowering, they're just overpowering everything. And it's taken a lot of the strategy and the theory crafting away from the game, mm. right? And I saw where Elite Wolf had said in the comments that, yeah, well, Dark Trooper was only three months ago. They knew that this was coming and I totally agree. Uh, but at the same time, you know, man, having six Galactic Legends, they're going to do a seventh. They're going to do an eighth. At that point, you've got four Galactic Legends for defense, for territory war, and you've got four for offense. How boring is that? Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, by them setting this up to where, you know, it actually makes people, you know, forced to have to put hard things on defense and try where it's not just about just getting the one shot 60 banners it's going to change the way we play the game Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think that that's a good thing i think it's going to change the strategy because right now it's it's just a boring efficiency strategy Mm -hmm. fair enough and i love i like the tough defenses i like it whenever you have to know how to two shot something because you have nothing else because you have set the bde defense Mm -hmm. And I'm ready to get back to BDE defenses, and yep. so I'm I'm actually looking forward to this myself. Fair enough. And I think that I think that you know uh, uh, the big change that is going to kind of suck is for the free to play player who has that lean account. He's kept it really really lean. He didn't go after Ray. He went after Slicker, and then he went after J you know JM uh, Jedi Master Luke. He skipped Ray. And he just he's kept his 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 roster really really lean. He's screwed mm. because now he's going to have to have all of them to be competitive, you know. Um, and I think that's the only part that sucks about the whole thing is the people that were strategically trying to go lean are kind of getting butt hurt on this thing, and they're and they're getting <laughs> for it. They really are. Yeah. The 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 last point I want to make too is the changes they talk about modding where defense sets stuff like that is going to be more important going forward most people have not focused on those types of sets yeah right so that's going to be a a big deal you're going to see a shift in in mod farming and it may not be all about speed anymore it really may not and that actually could help some of the players that are free to play yeah Absolutely. No, okay. spot on. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree about the defense set thing. They're they're about to become so much more valuable. Yeah. If if yeah. you've had them lingering around, uh, your your thoughts, Grid, on on the changes to some of the characters, bro. I'm I'm certainly super keen on your your opinion, man. Really am. Yeah. Um. I think so. The 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 reason that they were talking about switching some of these characters was exactly about defense. That's that was. That's what I was, uh, you know, kind of going with um, in the the very quick. Uh, my thoughts about it is they're they're basically saying, look, defense just isn't working the way that we wanted to. Tanks are not really like tanks anymore. They just absorb right. like one or two hits, and then they're dead because there's so much damage. Because right. everybody's mastery and their fucking mother is damage, crit damage, uh, crit chance. Just it's all of defense penetration, all this stuff. And so you don't even like need tanks half the time anymore because they just they absorb a couple of attacks, but they just die so quickly now. It's, it's not there. Um, and so I I a hundred percent agree. If you want to revamp defense, absolutely. It's it's a terrible stat. It's basically negligible right now. Apart from like three people, kind of maybe mm. maybe a few more. But like if you have a bonkers high defense, like fives what general kenobi maybe like there's not a lot of people that you're like oh i need to get defense on this person because it's such a negligible stat it almost does nothing and so you're like well might as well you know stack up some health and protection offense or whatever something actually makes a difference 
So if they want to rework defense, absolutely. I don't think disguising, changing these characters' kits as a buff, simultaneously nerfing, like on a non-galactic legend level, those characters have, like you could consider them being buffed. Like getting gas to have that awesome, like defense penetration thingy-ma-bobber and uh, having JKL to do all that true damage to tanks, like, you're, they're kind of saying like here's here's a buff to these characters but in the same time they're extending this like kind of buff thing to these people they're pulling away what makes them achieve what they can achieve now as galactic legend counters and that that i that kind of pisses me off because i'm one of those characters i, I don't have a super lean roster i actually have quite a bloated roster um but for gac my most like enjoyable thing is I look at my opponent's you know roster and I figure out what they're going to put on defense and I find a way to counter these galactic legends and counter these characters so that I put the majority of the time I'm putting two of my three galactic legends on defense. If I could put all three on defense, great. Like I put CLS, Gas, SLKR, JML, JKL, Padme. Like I put the whole works on defense and then I figure out what I need on offense to in this kind of off meta sort of way, counter some teams. I find it super fun. I don't do the whole big offense thing. I think it's super fun. And now all of that just got pulled away and it's now who's going to have more galactic legends and who's going to place the smarter ones on defense. Because mm -hmm. if somebody puts SLKR on defense, I can still do JKR, JKL, most likely against it. So now SLKR's viability on defense has dropped off. Um, C still sucks on defense. I mean, he's he's not horrible, but Vader should still work against C. Imperial Troopers probably won't, but maybe, but probably not. Um, and so you got to like, now it's just, okay, who has more Galactic Legends? And it's just, I feel like it's going to be so boring. I feel like it's going to be so stale. So I'm not looking forward to that, but I will say, and I've been trying to do my best here. <laughs> I have been trying to hold back the knee-jerk reaction that a lot of people are having. Yeah. Now, I just yeah. said all of that. That's my knee-jerk reaction. Like, yeah. what the fuck? I just I worked <laughs> on all these characters. I did all this stuff. I have all these off-meta counters. They're so fun. And now I can't do any of that. Now I got Now we'll just have to discover new ones. Hopefully, they're still out there. We'll discover some new ones. And I'm thinking something's going to come. They have If they are planning on revamping defense, if they're planning on pushing the ceiling, mm. I, that's where we're at. This is another ceiling push. Just like when... When mods were first introduced to the game, when Galactic Legends were first introduced to the game, they've pushed the ceiling. Yeah. And and we are seeing this with JMK. JMK is not on the same level as other Galactic Legends. Yeah. He's not. Yeah. He he just simply is not. The other ones are rock, paper, scissors. Slicker destroys C, C destroys JML, JML destroys Slicker. Ray's over there doing whatever potatoes do, and they're all kind of just like hanging out, right? And the, you got this little nice little balance. And so as you're climbing, you use whatever character, and then you do like some weird sketchy things on the side to make sure that you might be able to, you know, you can use C with armor and what, and you can beat us, okay, but it's like dicey. But like nobody is reliably beating JMK 100%, no, no questions asked, JMK Katano down, easy. No problem whatsoever. It's not happening. They have pushed the ceiling with JMK and Commander Tano. Mm. And they already are saying Lord Vader and Maul. Maul is going to be the Commander Tano to Lord Vader. Yep. So immediately they're telling us Lord Vader and, and JMK are going to be in this next tier level, I think. Even as a Galactic Legend are going to be on this next tier level. Yep. And so what they had, to, they had to force everybody down. Mm. They had to. And since those other non-GL people were still kind of keeping up with GLs, they had to force them down because they're pushing the ceiling again. Yeah. So JMK and Lord Vader are going to be up here. The rest of the Galactic Legends will be here. And then they had to separate those so that all the non-GL things are just down there. And Absolutely. then they're going to push the ceiling again. Yep, that's it. And yeah. like, I don't know. I could go on and on about this. I'm sorry, but just like... <laughs> it's all right, no worries. Well, we still got more to come, man. but we haven't even started I don't yet. like it personally we're, because we're still, yeah. for a huge percentage of the player base... This is not seen as a good thing, and it's more of a slap to the face. Eventually, for long-term players, not a terrible thing. Mm. I mean, we, 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 we all go after the We have to remember anyways. about a year ago, we were sitting here in the same position, and we weren't talking about this road ahead. We were talking about the introduction of Relics. Right, and yeah, I think and that like, we oh all my, agree oh, that there was a huge knee-jerk reaction. There was actually a lot of people that left the game 
A lot of them came mm-hmm. back, but a lot of them left the game yep. because they were unhappy with how Relic's played out. And that was the next thing I was going to cover is Relic 9. Now, we've thrown that in with it as well. Uh, but yep. again, I think that we all agree that the introduction of Relics has been a very, very good thing for using characters that you've never used before that just weren't viable. They were sitting there gathering dust in your roster. And I think that, you know, they were certainly a great introduction. So now we're, now we're at Relic 9. Now... I actually believe the Relic 9 release is way too soon. I just oh, yeah. that's just what oh, I believe yeah. straight up. So I, I want to oh, yeah. I, I want to start with Tass. I, I want to start with you, mate, who uh, who looks like a Bond villain right now, stroking his kitty. <laughs> yeah. um, dude, yes. I, I want your opinion on on Relic 9. Um, I mean, really, all you're going to do is put you know you know Galactic Legends to Relic 9 immediately, aren't you? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, this is the way that they're pushing it. So Absolutely. Yeah, when they when they say that it's going to be uh especially beneficial to tanks, I what I hear is an especially large uh jump in health. Possibly even a uh you know, like a greater than one and a half percent or so jump in armor, something like that. Like yeah. like that's obviously meant to feed into Galactic Legends. And of course you, you want to feed into the Galactic Legend unique Zeta there for all of them. So yeah, of course, all the GLs are an auto fix for that Relic 9, but completely agree. It does feel a bit soon. Um, You know, we, we, we know a lot of people that are able to do Merc runs and, and regularly get access to those Relic 8 materials. So you know, there's there's a good number of people running with 20 plus relic eights at this point, but those people are very few as a as a proportion as a, uh, of the population. And there's so many guilds still struggling to reliably be able to clear uh, Crancor. And I don't I don't see uh, I mean I I see relic nine just leaving them in the dust. You know, for those oh, of us yeah. that have already got a, a wealth of relic eights to us. It's, it just feels like a, a burdensome push and inconveniently, you know, timed push on us, but it, it feels crushing for anybody that's like, you know, not, uh, not swimming in R8s already. Yeah, fair enough. Fulbright, your thoughts on Relic 9, mate? You, you agree? Well, Is there anything I, else? I agree. I think it's about uh, six minutes too early or six months uh, too early. Uh, I mean, they like, man, even get old guys like me are starting to run short on gear. You know what I mean? They, yeah. They're kind of throwing way too many things really quickly. And uh, that's that's all fine and dandy because there needs to be a grind. But, man, trying to throw two Galactic Legends plus these uh, the Conquest uh, characters, uh, New Fleet, uh, Capital Ship, you know, uh, just got the, the Razor Crest up. I mean, dude, that's a lot crap to do. And then on top of that, throw out there, hey, you know, here we are. We're, we're going to, we're going to also throw in a relic, a relic increase. And I have, a, I'm afraid that it shortly will be followed by a level increase. And mm. uh, you know, if 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 people are going to have to really, if people are going to have to really push for, uh, if people are going to have to really push to get more mods, especially defense oriented mods, they're going to be short on credits. Mm. You know, I mean, it, that, it, I mean, this is what it is. So it, it, this might slow down the farm. Um, that might be a good thing, but it'll end up causing realignment in guilds. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> a big deal because it, right now, if you, if you honestly think about it, how many guilds do you see in the top 50, top 100, that do not have 50 of all the Galactic Legends. Mm. Yeah, There's absolutely. quite a few of them. Yeah. Quite a few of them. And, right? and, and that'll, that'll, <clears throat> that'll bring up another issue as well, and I'll come to that in a minute. But, Greed, I want to talk yeah. specifically about two characters that are going to really be interesting when Relic 9 comes out. And those two mm-hmm. characters are a, a General Kenobi and, and also mm-hmm. Bosk. Uh, when it comes to Houndstooth, because a Relic 9 Houndstooth, that sh- that's going to be nasty. It really is. Um, so yeah. I, I, what, what are your thoughts on on those guys obviously being uh, at Relic 9 level? They're, they're really going to be tough to knock down, aren't they? They really yeah, are. They are. That's going to be, yeah, with those, especially with those capital ships, whenever you see that Relic, because capital ships, there's um, ships in general still have uh, 
a cap, if mm -hmm. you will, since there's no way of modifying those ships apart from the pilot, there's a cap. So if everybody gets to relic eight, it becomes the coin toss again, which is everybody, not everybody, but you know, people remember those days with Poe and the, and the, and the droids and whatnot way back when that yeah. it was, it's annoying. And yeah. whenever that ceiling gets pushed a little bit, you can get a relic eight Kenobi or relic nine Kenobi. It, it makes it all that much more difficult for your opponents. Um, the ship's going to be insane. The speed, the speed's going to get boosted again. Hound's tooth. I, I don't even, I mean, that's just going to be, dude, the bonus protection is going to be nuts. Like every single time it's going to take some serious damage to kill that guy now, like for mm -hmm. sure. And then also on the flip side as their tune, like their tune themselves, like Kenobi, you can already at R8, I think mine's at 120 odd thousand health, something like that. Yep. Um, I mean, like, and if they're planning on boosting up his defense, yeah. So we got about a, close to 120,000 health with 70% uh, armor. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see at Relic Nine if the if defense is actually getting boosted that much, which I, I kind of hope it gets reworked. I mean, it's it's been a terrible stat as of late, but that'd be really interesting to see how much of a boost that's going to make for them, both on their ships and and on their tune side. I Absolutely. think that's going to be really interesting it to see. Be. And I would be. throw into the mix when it comes to Relic Nines. I am very interested to see what uh ray is going to be like now oh yes absolutely because be rough. ray at first was almost a joke because vader beat her so easy mm. but not anymore that's gone now not anymore yeah absolutely not anymore ray's gonna i think ray's gonna get a, a significant little i think she's gonna see a significant boost in activity yeah absolutely. Um, at relic nine especially now that they changed sudden whirlwind yep it's gonna change to to uh boost up based off of her relic amplifier levels Ray's, See, are, Ray's already won't nasty. Be able to get through anymore. Ray's already nasty in three v three, GAC. Yeah, like you know, just it's just horrible. And yeah, having Relic Nine in there chucked into the mix, that that's going to be brutal. It really is going to be brutal when you stick that on the front on defense, which I think the majority of us are going to do. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, I, I want to obviously talk yeah. about the the next three new characters. I want to ask each of you one individually. Okay, so I want to start Tasnix with the uh, Executor. We need to ask you about the Executor. I know you're a big fan. Uh, you are looking forward to this ship coming to the game. So it made sense to ask you that one. Uh, but do, super, your thoughts. I'm super geeked and I didn't see it actually uh, coming that they would do this, but I want to show you guys something special. This is this is a relic. This is a blast from the past. We're talking about Tassinix's fifth grade and, and shit of that kind. Back in the day, there was this Star Wars customizable card game, you see, and you could play as, you know, either the Empire or, you know, the Rebels as a faction, right? And uh, they released, way back in the day back, your boy Executor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Now, now let me read this card to you because people don't uh, people don't be knowing about this ship. They don't know what this <laughs> thing's about. Let me read you about the flavor text on this thing. <laughs> Flagship of Death Squadron. Death Squadron, by the way, is the the private you know flight wing belonging to Darth Vader. Like all, all of the pilots that you see in A New Hope flanking Vader, their their tag is like DS six one one, DS six one two, DS six one three, DS six one four, like. Uh, just, just old lore ship. But anyway, let me read the rest of this. Over eight kilometers long, carries 38,000 troops, can conquer entire star systems by sheer intimidation and terror. Lord Vader's personal command ship. And what was so cool about this card back in the day is that it was game-breaking. Like, the only other... Like, when you're playing characters in this game, they have to go to locations. You can play starships onto planet locations and characters onto actual places on planets and stuff, right? This functions like a mobile location, right? And and it's, and it's text in the game. It's It was just completely busted when this thing was current. May add, unlimited pilots, passengers, vehicles, and starfighters. Has ship docking capability. You can land capital ships in this. Need somewhere to park your Imperial class Star Destroyer? Executor's got your back. <laughs> Permanent pilots aboard provide ability of three, meaning that it was resistant to like people that have force ability trying to attack it. Anyway... 
this thing was a god. Like you set you set whole armies in this, moved from planet to planet, and just scourged rebel scum off of it. But like this is the only super class star destroyer to exist in Star Wars. It is the largest ship without exception in Star Wars. I I am so awesomely excited to to be like long donging people with fleet, uh, in fleets with this ship. <laughs> Quick question: How are they going to fit it on the screen? <laughs> oh That's my what god, I'm dude. How you dude, we thought the malevolence was bad. <laughs> exactly. How are you gonna fit an eight kilometer ship and have any sense of scale when you when you put that next to like currently large ships like Finalizer? Look larger, I guess, a little bit than stuff like Home One. But we're talking a completely different order of magnitude. So good luck to him on that. Uh, <laughs> just good luck. <laughs> I love it. And and the bounty hunter uh you know affiliation, you know, obviously it's gonna be, you know, you know, really buffing up the bounty hunter ships in our game. Um happy with that or would you prefer it have been obviously more empire based? Um uh, squadron? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, a, it's just, I mean, I, I'm wrapped cause I'm a bounty hunter boy. You guys know that, right? I'm really, really thrilled about it, but, uh, yeah, hopefully it'll lead into something that we need down the track for something epic. I think that that would be great. I think it'd be good. P it's a great character. So the pilot that comes with it, it's definitely worth farming. There's no doubt about that. It'll be full on. So really, really looking forward to it. Um, let, let's talk, uh, let's talk Lord Vader with our boy Fulbright. Let, let's talk Lord Vader. Bro. Um, real, real quick, just real quick. Wu Kang goes, that's its secret ability. You can't see your buttons or the team. You have to guess whose turn it is. <laughs> <laughs> it just covers the whole screen. You're like, please. You're going to need to play it on your uh, on your plasma TV at home. It's the only way you're yeah. actually going to play the character. Just go right? to a movie theater. Yeah. Can I borrow the yeah, screen yeah, yeah. Just, real quick? Just, yeah, go into your local theater and just hook it up with some Bluetooth or something and play it on that. Uh, Fulbright, <laughs> Lord Vader, your thoughts. New Galactic Legend incoming. We knew it was coming. Uh, the data mines obviously confirmed that a while ago. I thought it wasn't going to be. I thought it was Maul. I got my wires crossed. Obviously, he's a Conquest character. But we'll come back to that, and that's fine. Happy with either character coming. But, dude, he's going to take down Kenobi, yeah? That's what he's going to be for. Oh, he's deaf. <laughs> no, we he's lost him. Or he's, you're he's muted. muted. We lost him. Boom. How about now? He's back. That's there better. Go. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah, I think that, uh, I mean, he's going to be the counter to Kenobi, and... I think it's just too little too soon but again you know but uh, hey you know i mean we'll get him and i'm sure he's gonna be fun to use I, I, i'm i'm really dreading uh, uh gearing up uh tuscans and sh shit like that but hey whatever you yeah. know you're gonna have to do it everybody's gonna have to have it because mm. that's obvious because of all the changes yeah so oh, absolutely gotta yeah. have him it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, and, and I think the requirements... I, I've got a question I want to ask you, right? Because when the announcement came out and they brought out the announcement for for gas coming out in the third wave of requirements, um, can I just throw maybe a really silly idea out there? Why didn't they just release it in the first batch? Ah, uh, yeah. They should have. They should have. Man, but... Uh... Yeah, I think that uh, they're afraid that people would get the materials back and then, you know, go ahead and and put it and put it somewhere else and then bitch bitch about it because, you know, uh, that they're gonna have to gear him up again later. Mm. Um, but man, we it's just unfortunate. But everybody's just gonna have to have it. Yeah, just gonna have to have it. Yeah. It's it, that's gonna be a make or break point uh, unless you want to get dominated. Uh, in your GACs and in TWs, man. Absolutely. Ah, oh, spot on. And, uh, and Grid, dude, let's talk about Maul. We've been discussing for a hell of a long time now how much the Maul that we have in this game sucks. Um, we deserve boom. a better Maul. We've said that for a while, and we're getting one. Um, obviously, along the same sort of lines as Commander Tano will be, same release cadence. Um, obviously, it's going to be something that, that rips any Kenobi a new one. Uh, so again, uh, are you happy with Maul and, and the release this way? What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Um, Commander Tano is, is proving to be obviously a, uh, game changer, mm. uh, extremely good character. Mm. Um, so if that's any indication of what we can kind of expect from Maul, I think that'd be really cool. They've already made the comparison that, Maul is going to be the Commander Tano to JMK to Lord Vader. Yeah. So I'm expecting a lot from him. Um, I think it's going to be really cool to see how their kits interact. Mm -hmm. um, they've already given us, you know, a little bit of sneak peek here and there about like the Mandalorian title and stuff like, or the Mandalore title as 
uh, and, and bringing in Beskar ingots here and there and blah, 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 stuff like that. They said they're drawing a lot from season seven because this is the Mandalore mall. Yep. Um, so I think we're going to see, I mean, mall is still mall. He's still kind of like a shady dude doing some sketchy stuff here and there and, and kind of working in the backgrounds, but I think he's going to be way more intimidating, way more aggressive. Um, I'm really excited to see what they're kind of doing with his kit and how that's yep. going to interact with Vader, but also even Vader aside, uh, because I mean, realistically, um, uh, I'm not. I'm not going to get Vader for a long time. I'm yep. going to go JMK Ray then Lord Vader. I think because uh, I just I that many. I mean, you're going to need Bad Batch, Tuscan Raiders, and who else knows what. Yep. And that that's going to take me six months to a year. Yeah, but the good um, thing is you're going to be just, farming up Maul along the way, just as you do your exactly. normal conquest. So it's not exactly. like you have so, to. So part of me is direction. actually more excited yeah. for Maul because I'll actually be able to use him. Yeah. So I want to see what his usability, his viability is going to look like mm. outside of Lord Vader. Yeah. Like Commander Tano is extremely plug and play with light side scoundrels, unaligned force users, like that whole thing. You just throw her in somewhere and she's amazing. Yeah. And uh, I, I hope Maul is kind of on that, that level of, you know, even if you don't have Lord Vader, get Maul, get him onto some Sith team or whatever it is, however they're exactly going to... Def- no, he doesn't have the Sith title, right? He's going to be a scoundrel and a Mandalorian or something? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so get him Mando he's tag. He's a Mandalorian. Yeah, get him yeah. Mando tag. Really hey, surprising. He's, but- he's going to have the metal legs. He's going to have the. He's going to have steel balls. <laughs> hard to fucking kill him, man. He's, he's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm almost more excited for Maul than I am for Vader, but that's because I won't get Vader for several months. So and I'm really excited enough. to see what he does. That's fair really enough, be cool. absolutely. Can, can I just ask quickly, and, and again, this is probably something I should have covered a bit earlier than now, but one concern I have, and, and I've been avoiding this word for a heck of a long time um, because I don't like the use of this word, but it's something that we need uh, to discuss. And the newest changes that we're getting, obviously buffing up the Galactic Legends and taking away all the counters, there's this word that I don't like, and it's called sandbagging. Now, I see that being an enormous issue going forward for many, many guilds in Territory War. If you don't have enough Galactic Legends, you ain't going to win. And I can see nah. that there are elements, and I hope there aren't, but there will be, certainly will some, be. some elements that will use that to their advantage and and i don't like that at all and i think that the matchmaking needs to be looked at to be honest to yeah, the, consider the amount of galactic legends you're going to have in each guild so that you get even matchups because that to me i see being a big problem boys but but what do you think i totally agree i think that uh yeah. not only are you going to have that problem but i i think that you'll it will give uh, the opportunity for some bigger players that are hanging out in some smaller guilds uh, it, it'll give them the, uh, an opportunity <laughs> to move up, play with competition that they want where they where they need to be. Mm. What I think they should do personally is restructure the reward system. So if you do go in short and you do the in, in, as you do these things, the rewards shrink. That'd be the easiest way to fix it. Mm. If they started tying like relic nine materials to territory war. And if you went in with 40, uh, 47, 48 players, if and you could not get relic relic uh, nine material unless you went in at all fifty, that's a sandbagging problem. Quick. Yeah, true, true. I, I like that. Yeah, that actually makes a bit of sense. Your, your thoughts, uh, Tass? Or you know, I'll come back to your grid. I'll ask you last, bro. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, your thoughts, no, Tass? No, no. Uh... <laughs> nothing else but to piggyback on Fulbright and say, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, the 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 biggest thing that I've been saying the longest time about people complaining about sandbagging is like it, it's a tactic. Like like as long as as long as CG isn't gonna crack down on it, there's no use in complaining that people do it. Like <laughs> like either plan on running full so that you're matched against somebody yeah. running full or roll roll the dice and get piped as you will. But yeah. like, yeah, if if uh, if they tied rewards to having, you know, how many members out of fifty you brought in, man, that would solve the problem. That would be an elegant solution. I'd really, and, and this is a great time for them to be doing such sweeping change. I think it's very clever yeah. of them to announce this a month ahead of when they're doing it because they can, you know, add to or revert as much as they like in that period to this big bundle, and then just make a clean break. Mm. 
Yeah, and, and I and I want I want to uh, say something. I'm not saying like if a guild only has like 49 members, they don't have 50, and all 49 sign up. I'm not saying they yeah, should so be penalized. Yeah, so full sign up, regardless of how many yeah, you've got in the guild. Exactly. So but, full sign but, up, but not like yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, I, I, I'd like to ask everybody out there, like in the chat. I mean, I mean, do you respect a guild if your strategy is to run 40 players or 38 players and beat up on the Jerry's kids? Mm. I mean, everybody's got a freaking, you know, a freaking strategy on how to be successful in this game. Yeah, yeah strategies in life. My boy Cutter here. You see my boy's Cutter? You see this, Hansi? Yeah, I can see. I can me. see Cutter in the background. Yes, yes. <laughs> he, his, he, he's got a plan. It's you know he keeps like like a like a like a pallet of preparation H at his house. That's his plan, right? <laughs> and that's how he gets through life. And we're good with that. But if your strategy is to always run short, always go after people that you know you're going to pound on. I mean, you're nothing but a but a, a bully, and, and I don't give. And you can't say, "Oh, well, it's the only way free to play can be competitive." I've heard that. You free to play if you get a bunch of a free to play guild. That's the only way they can be competitive is to beat up on other free to play people that are smaller than them. Mm. That is, and, and it's kind of a chick way of doing things. Yeah, fair and um, you but know, it happens. I mean, but it happens, and that's the thing. It, it definitely happens. It does, it? and but yeah. yeah, if you scale the rewards, it'll put a stop to all that. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Grid, your thoughts, man? Yeah. Matchmaking. And again, look, I hate I hate mentioning the word sandbagging. I don't throw that around lightly. You guys know that. I don't think I've ever, ever said that word on this show, ever. But it's just, I see it being a problem. I really do. And, and it's something oh. that I'm not proud of being an issue in this game. It really isn't. Yeah. So I'll, I'll preface my opinion with, I don't give, uh, I cannot give any less f about what i do with territory wars i don't mm. i don't care in the slightest mm. territory wars for me and my guild and for most of the guilds in my alliance is purely a sandbox mode yeah we, we use it to practice teams yep. winning or losing obsolete yep. the the difference in rewards from first to second is so negligible that it's not worth the effort to put in to force yourself to try and get a win it's just it's just not so we're just like hey play around do what do what you want set some defense so you get some rewards better your roster but at the end of the day, the majority of the time, you're either going to, because the matchmaking is so weird, 300 million GP, when you're talking about 300 million GP, there's so many different ways that you can make that happen. Mm. There's so many yeah. different ways. And so you get this horrible matchmaking system of like, I see people who are in, who are in chat saying they've been out, tripled on Galactic Legends. Mm. So Shouldn't if happen. you're going to tell me that Galactic Legends are going to become even more important but not do because they said that right they they said they are not looking at matchmaking right now yeah they they're they're yeah. not considering a big change on it and so if you're going to tell me i'm still going to go up against somebody who can have triple the galactic legends that i do and not fix the matchmaking and make it even harder to beat galactic legends i'm not going to care it, uh, somehow i'm going to find a way to care even less about territory wars yeah so absolutely yeah. i see that being a huge problem for that mid the, that kind of mid player base like yeah, very vaguely speaking, that kind of like 150 million to like 300 sort of million, that very wide range of players that if you're going up against people who have all the Galactic Legends in the world, they throw all of them on defense. And if you didn't keep all yours for offense, you lose. Yeah. Like, yeah. and then those sandbaggers are just going to get even worse because they are, they're like Fulbright to, to go to your point. I mean, in between ah. you two guys, both Tessanax and Fulbright, like, I don't respect those guilds that do that, but then I also don't fault them because why wouldn't they? CG's not going to fix yeah. it, and that's the easiest way to win. So it's yeah, this terrible, like, lose-lose situation for everybody, and I think it's just yeah, a shit show but, for everybody. But, but Grid, think of it like this, man. It, all they got to do is if you go in with 95% with of your players, 95% or less, you get two Chewy shards <laughs> playing. Yeah. You know, then that way, that way, even if, you know, and make the rewards where if you go in with 100% of what you got, you know, you know, 100% of what you got, great. Then you actually, even if you get in second place, even if you lose and get your kicked in, at least you get something worth getting. You know, that's right. what they need to do. Put the Relic 9 material there. You want to bring so back Territory War? You, there, you know, yeah, make it relevant. That's how you do it. Yeah. yeah, Yeti brings up a good point. I saw someone mention this earlier as well. Um, that's going to be hard to tie to something that 
Like if you get a hundred percent people signed up, regardless, there's people who don't play. Mm. And and for a variety of reasons. And that's one of the things where it's really difficult yeah. because territory wars is like for us, the part of the reason why it became so ignorable, I guess, if you wanted, uh, or or became so secondhand and nobody cared about it, is because I mean, my alliance name is We With Lives. It's people who are doing a lot of stuff. There's a lot of soldiers and there's a lot of people in the medical field. There's a lot of people, they're just all over the place. And so originally we're like, yeah, let's do territory wars. And we just kept losing and losing because people couldn't play because they're too busy. And I know you have 24 hours, you could find time to do it. Of course you could, but there's people who don't sign up because they're busy. There's people who don't attack on offense or don't set defense because they miss it because they're busy uh, uh, i've, I've got no problem with that that's fine I, I totally get that but then it's like how do you how do you plan i, I, like... I understand but but if it's still at least a 50 50 sign up you should still get uh, you know like a full sign up regardless of how many are in your yeah. guild right if you get a full sign up you should still get buff cool. rewards even if you come second yeah do you know what i mean so i, I think that you should uh, still okay. get an improved level of rewards for signing up whether you can actually participate or not whether you want to or not whether you want to be really hardcore at it it's totally up to you but at least you're still going to get a minimum better level of rewards having everyone signing up than not okay. yeah and, I and, yeah. and no, i'm it's just like a, it's just I'm, like I'm, a aiming, I'm aiming at the strategic people that do this you know yeah. with with a roster of people that they change in and out to give themselves a better opportunity of a victory that i have a problem with and i think we all no. do so but yeah it's just like a race that's what I'm people at. sign up and post zeros all the yeah, time yeah they still get rewards yeah that's right what's the yeah. fucking di- I mean, what's the difference yeah that's well, it. i mean that's, that's what they're right. doing right now you just huh. sign up and yeah. either do one attack or put one thing on defense and then yeah. you're good if you don't want to attack and if you don't take it seriously that's fine but at least if your guys are hitting the join button you should actually get us something a bit extra because you're even just coordinating a better opportunity yeah. for your guild to get better rewards i have zero Absolutely. problem with that we need to do that Absolutely. It needs to happen. Absolutely, I agree. But yeah, I mean, but I they agree. need to prevent people from, uh, you know, taking out the the Billy the, you know, the Billy Club and and pounding on people. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I guess. I guess. I, if we were to maybe kind of summarize a lot of this conversation, is if you are actually planning in a month to make these amount of changes, you need to look at how that's going to affect GAC and Territory Wars. You really got to take a look at matchmaking. Yes. Because if there's no other way, if you are not going to change anything, that is going to be a nightmare for people. 100%. With this matchmaking, how it is, how this current matchmaking is, will be horrendous. Yeah. For a lot of If you're changing everything else, you got to look at it. Completely agree. Yeah. You got to look at it straight up. Uh, Mm -hmm. Last point we're going to do, because we got to move on to our GAC battle very soon, guys, because we've got an epic battle Mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. My last point, and I just want to focus this directly at Grid. Uh, if I can, if you don't mind, I'm sorry, gentlemen. Um, community versus developers, bro. Speed hey. arena. All right. <laughs> now, dude, whoever thought of that idea is a, an absolute genius. I'm not going to lie. I think the whole idea of, you know, a, uh, you know, developers versus the creators, I think that's enormous. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I, I hope it'll be something along the lines of something for charity as well. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, again, it's, it's totally, totally fun. But, but who do you want? Who do you want on team creators? That's what I want to know, Reed. Who do you want in there? Apart from yourself, because, you know, like you're a you know good-looking guy with a beard and hair, and I'm putting my hand up for you to go in. But uh, who, who else Who else do you want in there, man? That's what I want to know. Who else do you want in there? You know what? Honestly, I want I want a variety. Um, I, I know some people might just be like, oh, bring in people who are good at GRC. I want entertainment as well. Mm-hmm. Like... Not to do my own horn. I mean, I'm I'm kind of funny, but like I'm more so take GSC serious. You know, I I do a lot of planning and strategizing. Yeti and Chad, I know he does the same thing. A lot of planning, a lot of strategizing. We are fun to watch, but I feel like there are people who are more entertaining. I would like to have this like variety of not just the best GAC players, you know, the best GAC creators there are, but people that are going to have fun with it. Let's make it, let's make this, they're speed rounds. You don't have time to do homework and plan out all this stuff. You just show up, you have some fun, you have a good time, hopefully make some money for charity if we can along the way type of thing. So I think it'd be really fun to see a variety of players, obviously big end players. Um, people have been around, around for a very long time, Arnold, Cubs, um, Ian, I'd love to see those guys in there for sure. Uh, Urz, I think would be funny to see how he's going up against developers and 
and these team comps that they come up with. Uh, I feel like that could be a lot of fun. Yeti is more on the strategic side of things. I think it'd be kind of fun to see how he handles some of those battles. Um, flip side, like Skeltrix is very interesting to watch how his mm. GAC goes. And um, uh, why am I forgetting his name? Uh, Black Mamba. Black yeah. Mamba does a lot of interesting stuff with GAC as well. It'd be really cool to see how they are put into a different, because they, they specified, like they emphasize very heavily, like speed rounds. And so I'm wondering if this is like, I mean, do we have like an hour? Is this like a 30 minutes? Just like show up and do as many battles as you can see who you can beat. I'm really interested to see what that looks like and, and how that could be both like, um, informative as well as entertaining. So I want, I want a wide variety of people. So we all have fun with it and, and see some of these battles. So absolutely Heinze, obviously i want you in there dude of course <laughs> mate the of only course way you in there the only way, I'd, the only really way I'd have a shot mate if i was involved is if like we did like shots for each attack run you know like something <laughs> like that that would make it more fair oh, um, yeah also a variety of G, uh gp i want to yeah. see a variety of gp out there uh, i don't know i have no idea what the developers look like i don't know if it's going to be their personal accounts or how that's going to well, sort well, out. They, they don't, they don't actually see. get given accounts that would have to be their accounts, Grid, to be honest, because we, we, yeah. we discussed that with them in the past. Um, they've mentioned that um, in, I think it was in the, the mini stream that we did, the charity stream, that they don't get given accounts. They actually have their own. So it, yeah, would, be, their own. it would be their accounts or some sort of a test server where everyone gets a level playing field, I would assume, um, yeah, so, which I like that I idea guess. as well. So again, yeah. I think it'll be really interesting to see how it plays out. I'm excited about it. I think I think we need something for developers and, and community to engage together. I think that that's yeah. certainly something that we've been actually discussing for a while, that there's been that divide for some time now. And I think that that will help bring it all together. I, I really believe that can be a good thing. Tag team Heinze and Grid versus Crum and Ron Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be fair because I'm bigger. Anyway, moving right along. It's crazy. But uh, guys, look, let, let's finish the conversation today with that. That's been a really, really cool um, chat. Thank you, boys, for, for your input there. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, Tassinix, of course, and uh, Fulbright and our boy Grid. Thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Absolutely.